Good evening and welcome to Money Matters. My name is Jim Butler with Vidiri Wealth Management and my co-host tonight is Dave DeWitt of DeWitt Capital Management. Good evening, David. Jim, good to see you again. Good to see you. Well, here we are into a new year. Yes, we are. And of course, we always want to uh, uh, disclaim uh, this conversation with the timing of when this airs. Correct. Uh, but we know it's going to be early in 2015. Correct. And again, it's shaping up to be one filled with uncertainty and opportunity. Uh, so I'm curious, as you look into 2015, uh, are there certain areas that you particularly like and are going to give some special attention to? Well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, we predominantly are working with uh, master limited partnerships, which produce a, a lot of oil, a lot of natural gas, uh, and natural gas and oil production in the United States has been skyrocketing. Uh, so what's happened is, uh, because of that, the, there's more supply of oil on the market uh, than there was in the past. And last year, OPEC did not cut production, and then the price of oil has been coming down. Uh, so, you know, projections about where oil prices could be in 2015 might be a worthwhile exercise. Um, the one thing I do know is that with oil being down significantly, that does create opportunities for people to drive more, to fly more, buy RVs, uh, create production. Uh, they tend to hit the accelerator a little harder. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a tax reduction. It stimulates the economy, not just for the U.S., but for Europe and the rest of the world that, you know, consumes uh, oil. Um, it may not be so good for Russia because uh, they're in trouble with oil under $100, or Venezuela, they're in trouble. Iran and Iraq, you know, they don't, they don't like that at all. But from a consumer standpoint, like you uh, indicated, um, it, it benefits a lot of us because a, it keeps money in our pocket mm -hmm, to, be, mm -hmm. to be used somewhere else. Yep, this means money that would go to paying for gas. Let's say you go fill up your car, it's like 60 bucks. Now it's 40 bucks. You have 20 bucks. What are you going to do with that? Well, you go to the, uh, I'd go to Best Buy and probably look at a new uh, iPhone accessory or, I'd, you know, maybe do that for a while and maybe right. we'd invest in something. I don't know what. But you, you multiply this times 300 million people in this country and all the number of people around the world, this, this, this opening up of supply and demand with oil so that OPEC's no longer controlling it, will they'll reach a they'll reach a supply and demand level. So let's touch on uh, what investment opportunities that may present for our viewers. So other than putting a few more dollars in their pocket yeah. you know, because of cost savings, uh, what investment opportunities open up as a result of that? Well, we were just in Las Vegas presenting the Master Limited Partnership story, which I know is going to be the question that's coming up here. But um, when oil prices drop, the price of the MLPs tend to drop as well, sort of in lockstep. Um, Can you take a quick moment and just uh, update our viewers? An MLP is what? Uh, an MLP is a company well, for where we where we invest. It's called a Master Limited Partnership, and what they do is these companies are uh, invest in the pipelines, in the infrastructure, the energy infrastructure of the United States. So they do the movement of the oil from mm -hmm. one state to another, or the movement of the natural gas, or the processing of it. So they're involved in basically the simplest way of looking at it is in the transportation of energy. Okay. Now, it doesn't really matter whether energy oil is at 80 or 40 or 100 the cost of sending it through a pipeline is going to be the same. So when people own a mass limited partnership, they're basically owning an income generating transportation company. Okay. And but the misperception in the market is that they're energy companies, that they are oil companies, because they transfer energy, they think it's energy, but it isn't. It's transportation. So what happens, you get this misallocation in the market when the oil prices come down, then the MLPs come down, and then that's when the values start to really emerge. This thing, the same thing happened in 2008. So in other words, the value is because now the valuations are discounted, and if you can buy something at a discount, knowing that at some point in the future the prices will rise, yep. why wouldn't you want to invest at a discount? Yeah, it's like it's on the bargain counter. It's like uh, Black Friday. 
Right. Mm, in fact, uh, when OPEC cut, did decide not to cut their rate, they did, when OPEC decided not to cut production, it was on Thanksgiving. And then Friday was Black Friday, where all prices are on sale. Right. Well, that's when the oil, that's when the MLP prices right. started to go on sale. And the, the sale, you know, sale prices, uh, you know, they're still around. So, David, I would presume that not only MLPs, but uh, then common stocks of our uh, major oil companies uh, would also present some opportunities because those valuations or prices are going to come down as well. And they have. Yeah, with oil and oil companies, if they own oil and oil production, they'll they'll wait till the uh, price of oil recovers. So when the demand what, by by reducing the cost, the demand comes up. Eventually, the price of oil comes back up, and that's when the oil companies will profit. Right. Whereas with the MLPs, you can get a really high income because the prices came down because people think they're an oil company, but they're really a, a transportation company. Right. Right. Yeah, a distributor of a commodity. Basically, yeah. 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 Is there another sector, I'm just curious uh, whether it complements or not, just another sector that mm. as we look into 2015. Automobiles, RVs, <laughs> airplanes, uh, Because shirts, they're all benefiting boats, from the same renaissance. Yachts, you know, I mean anything that uses up oil. You know, people I know up in Canada, we have a place up in Canada, and, they, and when oil prices shot up, they, they sold their yachts because they couldn't afford the gas. Well, now we got the gas prices back down. I think boat sales will go up. Mm -hmm. Car sales, um, um, anything that runs on gasoline or diesel. Look at those industries. I I just noticed driving around the other day that some kid was driving around. It was a, like a big pickup truck with these big wheels, right? <laughs> and you know, and when I and I saw him coming around the corner, I heard him hit that accelerator because I know this kid thought. I can get gas for two ninety nine now. <laughs> and I am going to hit the accelerator. So, you know, it's going to accelerate economies. It's going to be a big tax break. It's going to help Europe. It's going to help U.S., Canada. It's going to help anybody who has to uh, drive anywhere. Well, I tell you what. Let's use that as the segue into our question. Yeah. Uh, because it fits right in with this uh, conversation. Robert Gorman of Ardmore is asking: Is there a safe place to invest in the oil market? in the MLP sector. So safe place Yes, are the words. Yes, safe place. Here's how I'll answer that question. Because of the misperception of what MLPs are in the stock market, I can't say that if you bought one that it, the price of it wouldn't go down, but I can say that the distribution you're going to get is most likely going to stay where it is or go up. So when things stabilize uh, and people realize what it is that they are, that if you're looking for stable, increasing income, there's a whole portfolio of MLPs you could buy that would provide them with that. And so over time, I think they'll make money in, in capital appreciation. So maybe the answer also depends on time frame and what he's defining as safe, because you're saying safety and income, although the principal value may fluctuate slightly more in the short term. I also look at safety in terms of inflation protection, because Again, in 1991, I bought Buckeye Pipeline for my mother. All right, it was $15 a share and then paid out $1.20 a year. She passed away in 2008. It was $60 and paid out $4. So for inflation protection, and that's where you really want safety, I'm, I think the MLP sector provides you safety from inflation. Uh, a 2% 10-year Treasury bond will give you a guaranteed 2% every year and guarantee you give your money back at the end of 10 years. But what's that 10 years from now, what's $10,000 going to buy? It, with inflation, it, it won't be the same. Right. So well, I look at risk two different ways. I look at inflation risk and I look at, at price risk. Good. Okay. Thank you. Good answer. Well, thank you for the question. And if you would like to send in an answer or a question to Money Matters, You can have your questions answered on Money Matters. Please go to our website, money-matters-tv.com. On our homepage, click on the banner on the right that says, Send Us Your Questions. While you're on our website, you can find information about our host and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S, t 
tv.com. Our guest this evening is Chantel Westby uh, of Chantel Art, and welcome, Chantel. Thank you very much, Mr. Ben. Glad to have you here. So you are an artist. I am. And we're going to learn a little bit about not only your artwork, but how our viewers might benefit considering art as an investment. So why don't we start with understanding what kind of artist you are and the type of work that you do and how long you've been doing it. Okay. My name is Chantal Wesby. I live in Bryn Mawr in Philadelphia and I am an artist uh, since uh, 14 years. But truly I am an artist since a long time. As a child I knew I want to be a painter but unfortunately I cannot be a painter for many reasons we discussed before. So. Uh, I would say I'm on the middle of my career, my career, and um, I, I, am a, I do paint abstract and a little bit representative. Uh, I did well this year. I did show in uh, Toronto. Mm -hmm. I did show in Osaka, Washington, mm -hmm. uh, to the Festival de Cannes in France that he was uh, in May. I did also, uh, I just came back from France, I did two opening, two solo, uh, that was in Nantes, in the sud-west of France, and then on my way back to Paris, uh, to, mm. le, uh, to Pierre Cardin. So, and then I was able to assist, to be a VIP uh, cocktail reception to La FIAC. And as you know, La FIAC is a little bit uh, similar to Art Basel. Art Basel was uh, last week, it just finished, and La FIAC was in, in October. And I have to tell you, gentlemen, if petrol, gas, doing very well, and I understand it is absolutely necessary we invest um, in a new uh, energy, mm -hmm. You should also to think about art, because uh, art is uh, is a lot of collector, and is a lot and lot more people ready to buy. We have a lot of new rich, as you know, mm -hmm. what not to do with the money. Right. So, uh, example: uh, nine million people, foreign visitors, went to the Musée du Louvre. That bring twenty-five million. We are on a fourth position in France. Then come China, eight million. Then come. Uh, are you talking about eight million people? No. Uh, or eight million. Eight, eight million in money in a dollar. No. That's the market it brings. Eight hundred million oh, dollars. Eight, eight hundred million. Okay. Yes. And uh, France uh, did make twenty-five million just from nine million the visitor. China has much more a visitor. And um, so La FIAC did bring uh, 1,500 uh, artists, and we have 70,000 visitors. Then if you compare Miami, it, we have 280 galleries, 34 country came. Uh, the, là, le peop, là le, uh, was represented from from uh, Argentina, from Mexico, from China came also. Uh, so uh, Art Basel did very well. Example, the sale was between $300,000 and $5 million. The sale, wow. all the, yes, and the sale was as much of four billion the art was installed to Art Basel. So yes, th these are very large dollar no. yes. numbers for yeah. the sale of art. Yes. So you're talking about various um, galleries or events where people come to buy art yes. in these various countries, and the dollar figures are going up. Oh yes. Oh yes. And how long is the uh, how long has the the art been increasing in in popularity? Let's say. I would say since uh, eight years, mm -hmm. even which what happened to our country, even more in Europe, that did not devalue. 
we have truly a lot of people ready to buy and put any top dollar to buy art. Hmm. So yeah. in other words, there's more of a market in Europe. As well in America. Okay. And now which is a new, uh, as you know, from China, I, this is a lot of people from China is ready to buy it. You know, the market is very strong. And it's what I say also from South America, from Chile, from Uruguay, Uruguay from Mexico, uh, uh, I did name Chile. So it is a lot of new buyer, a lot of collector ready to buy art. Mm. So I would think, Chantel, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, an investor in art, not an artist like you, but no. an investor in yes. art would like to know that because then when when and if they want to sell a piece of art that there seems to be a, a stronger market absolutely in order to sell that yes now it's uh, not the value. Um, you, you talked a lot about you know art shows and around the world but what what exists here in the Philadelphia area in this area actually you know uh, it is true uh, the art collector from New York come to see Philadelphia because he has much more chance to buy art and not to have this extravaganza of price. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of buyer from New York and we have a lot of great gallery in Philadelphia as well in the suburban in Maniok. In Maniok. In Maniok you have uh, Bazamor a Gallery. Uh, you have uh, the owner, his name is Lenny. We have in Newtown, mm -hmm. you have a Paula Jackson uh, Beauty Art Gallery as well in Wedges. Mm. Uh, you so we have, have art galleries in Westchester and Maniac. Yes, and of course in Philadelphia you have Wessler, you have Pimenti Gallery, my own gallery. I am represented from uh, um, E-Modern Gallery, Edward Fong. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I will get uh, solo in September, so I hope you could uh, come. <laughs> <laughs> I will be very happy Where to is this going to be? Where are you going to be doing a <laughs> so solo? Uh, he is in Philadelphia and he is on Arch Street. On Arch, Arch Street. Street? Yes. Okay. okay. And what's e the name of the... E Modern Gallery. And that is for September. And it is important for me to bring this to you, gentlemen, because uh, one part of the cell, from my part, a cell from um, e, e, from e Modern Gallery, uh, the cell we go to, to the foundation for AD, you know, I'm very involved for uh, for uh, to help as as much as possible for the children of AD. So I Haiti. try. It's Haiti. Yes. Haiti. Okay. And I try to raise money for them. So. How do you raise money for them? Um, well, I did start after I did make uh, three. I didn't make three trip. <laughs> if I pronounce this. You've word. had three trips to Haiti. <laughs> yes, to wow. Haiti, immediately after the earthquake. And then I did two others, and it was film. Mm -hmm. And I want to bring to the world, you know, how much misery is there, and yeah, there sure how much the people that. live really, really poorly. Mm. And I promised to the children I will do everything that is possible for them. So after I came back, uh, I did regroup uh, a collection, and the name is Kaleidoscope. I did send in France. Uh, because, you know, my life is divided from France and here. Mm. By the way, I am an American. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I did sign 24 paintings, and uh, I did have a lot of uh, opening, and you have to know 50 of the, the cell, my part, go to, to the children. And I have also great news, uh, a French, business, French company that give me a 200 computer. 200 computers? Yes. Uh, and For what? <laughs> no, he was giving to me. It was uh, because, you know, as a company, every X years you have to change of everything. Of course, of course. So I think my name starts to be there, and he knows how much I'm involved with Haiti. And so I did receive uh, 200 computers, and as we speak, going to be sent to Jeremy, and I'm going to give to the children in Haiti because the children in Haiti don't have anything for, uh, to study and, of course, no computer. So between my, uh, my passion for the art, I try to be positive and as a giver and try to speak for the people need. 
like right. uh, Haiti. You, we would say, of course, we have Africa, but Africa is far from us. Mm. From France is not that far, but Miami, Haiti is very close. Yeah. And uh, as truly, so I try to help. Well, it's very generous yes. of you that you're doing that. Uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, if somebody is interested in looking into art as an investment. Yes. Two questions. One, how much money should they start with? Should they start with ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars? I think ten would be fine. If you go in Philadelphia, you could find a great artist. I will not s give a name because it would be unfair. We have a lot of great artists in Philadelphia in a suburban. But I could see, uh, because I go a lot uh, opening, you could see great painting for less than two thousand dollars. And really? of course, yes, oh yes. And then of course, of course, you go to <laughs> X dollar. Uh, Chantel, but here's the, here's the other question. I picture myself walking into an art gallery. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm looking at other than it looks pretty or it doesn't, that meaning it speaks to me. Yes. How, would, how would somebody listening to this program try to understand the value in what they're looking at at a gallery? You have always a gallery is very well appointed. You know, is there to give you a lot of advice whatsoever? Mm -hmm. He know his artist, and he wants always to give the best. He goes from his own reputation, okay. like I mean, he reflect on my own gallery. I could see how much energy he expends. Do you know in uh, in his artist? He want to know everything, his background, why we paint, what it is our feeling, what it is the reason, and uh, he try to promote us in as much he promote the artist and match it gives a value to the artist but is there to answer every question but of course first you have to buy you know what you like first immediately you will get the picture that will be great in my home it has to be to fit in your home in your office in your living room you have to know every morning every night under the light under uh, a sunny day uh, this painting going to fight, you know, give you some emotion. Sometimes you will be sad, and the painting going to give you some answer. Sometimes you dream, and you let yourself, you know, to be inside and make your own world. First, you have to like. Right. Then, you know, you always get a uh, 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 trustful. <laughs> I, li like. I like to like it. I like to like it. Yes, you know, I want to. You like I want to go in and I want to see paintings that I like. Yes. And then I talk to somebody there who's yes. running the show, and yes. they'll say, "Well, this is done by this artist, and this artist is uh, known for this type of painting, and this is the value range that you know we've seen for these kind of paintings." And uh, but I like to know that I like that painting. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. And it is important to live with art. It is. Yeah. Well, we live in a universe of art. Anywhere you put your eyes, I mean, if you stay in your living room, you are in your sofa, immediately what you see from your window, you have a masterpiece. I mean, yeah, we right. are lucky where we live. You have a beautiful garden. Probably you have the scene of the ocean. You have right there a masterpiece. But beside us, you could buy other piece and for less money. It would be great, you know, you could buy every year something and you keep this for at least 10 years. Yeah. You will resell which. <laughs> we, we, my wife and I bought a, we were in Malvern and we were at a art gallery. Yes, I'm glad to hear and that. And we, uh, we bought a picture of a man on a horse jumping over a fence. Yes. And we just liked the painting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember who the artist was at That's this fine. point. Yeah. But upon further reflection, uh, looking at the horse and the man, and the, the it looked like maybe the um, proportions weren't exactly oh. with what reality would tell you it should uh. be. Now that could be a plus or a minus depending on. There was no way to negotiate a little bit. <laughs> 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 like in your business, I you could negotiate a little bit, you know? <laughs> yes. I just, I like the painting. I like yes. the painting. Maybe after you make a big sell, you maybe come back to this idea <laughs> for Christmas for your wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> could you move this horse's <laughs> rear end a little bit forward maybe? Because that's, yeah. you know, the but, but, but. 
I like the no, painting. You yeah, know, no pun intended, huh? <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> yes. Chantel, is there any other kind of artwork that we should be aware of? I realize that your passion is painting. Yes. Are there other areas or aspects of art to Any consider? Yes, anything. Sculpture, uh, video, photography, actually, uh, it hmm. is a new market, photography. Uh, is a lot of thing for sale, you know. Where is your pa passion? You could mm. find, yes. Could be a stamp, mm. books, you know, uh, painting, sculpture. Uh, yes, it's a lot of domain. But what is about you? What, did, what kind of art you like? Uh, certainly paintings. Yes. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say we have any kind of gallery at home, but yes. uh, we particularly like, uh, uh, my wife and I, uh, landscapes, outdoor yes. Yes. Uh, scene, scenes, yes. uh, say the mountains. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear. Uh, we have we seem to have a lot of portraits at our house of yes. ancestors. There you it go. Is it, it is art. It is art. We could respect that. It is yeah, art. Absolutely. You also mentioned uh, about holding something, a piece, for maybe ten years or yes. longer. Yes. So it sounds like even though the market for liquidating artwork yeah. is expanding, yes. somebody other than really liking it should probably think about holding it for a while too, maybe 10 years or longer. Yes. Or you might want to keep it. You may. How about antiques? I mean, are this art and antiques? I've heard that antiques kind of haven't really made that big No, I, I, I think it's true. Everything has to be modern like this. Yes, so, yes, antique, it is more difficult today, unfortunately. But it is always people which a good test. And I know a lot of people which mention Aaron from this area, we always have a space for antique pieces. So yeah, we need yeah. some antique, <laughs> antique dealer. Yeah. But today, uh, we mix this, modern and antique. And we have to live today, which uh, is a modern way. As well, you are an investor, a uh, modern uh, technology, you know, gas, petrol, and what we discussed before. So we exactly. have to move on. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Chantel, uh, the conversation has been very interesting, and I think you've opened uh, uh, my eyes and maybe some some of our viewers' eyes to at least consider uh, art as uh, an investment opportunity. And I think the starting point is learn more. Look. Yeah, I'm mean, curious. And if you're going to invest in something, it might be more fun to have something to look at yes. as opposed to a number on a screen. Or another so statement. You, get, you get two benefits from art. You yes. get to enjoy it, plus you get all the appreciation, maybe, right. you know, if it becomes valuable later. So it's yes. an investment, but when you get returns from by being able to see it every day. So uh, thank you for the time, it and hopefully uh, uh, we will become more educated and appreciative of your skills. I hope to see you in September. Okay. Thank and you. thank you for uh, listening to our show tonight. Uh, our next guest is going to be uh, Mike Dever of Brandywine Asset Management. Uh, and uh, Michael runs a couple mutual funds for them. So uh, until then, remember that your money matters. Thank you. Thank you.